I specialize in, there's clams in general, but I specialize in giant clams. Now giant clams are the only clams in the whole world that are photosynthetic. Now why do I say that? Because photosynthetic clams are large clams. They grow to big size, uh, half a ton size. The gigas gets four feet and it's, it looks like a Volkswagen, a mini Volkswagen in the, in the water. Uh, because they're photosynthetic, they're the only clams in the world that are, uh, can use the natural sunlight, the light itself, so they get to be very big. They are using the uh, sunlight, um, uh, uh, their mantle, as a solo panel, so the sunlight is the main source of food. So giant clams have been out for a billion years. Yeah, a billion years. Hello everybody, uh, I have a special guest today to, to interview. Uh, he came specially from, from LA, from uh, California, USA, to our humble place in, 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 in Aqua Forest here in Poland. And we are extremely happy to host you, to, to show you our facility and to talk to you with you about the clams, about your experience with the clams, because it's something really unique. We, I don't think that I know a person who has so much knowledge about this Beautiful and extremely fragile uh, animals, which are uh, which are um, uh, clams. And personally, I have some knowledge about it, but it's always it's just general knowledge. I don't have really a special uh, specialized knowledge that John has. And he, I'm I'm very glad that he will be able to sh to to share with us this knowledge and and even to share and to understand better the clams as an animal, how to keep them how to make them thrive. And yes, so welcome, John, and I give you the camera. The camera exactly. Thank you so much. I, I am John, as he says, and uh, Severin is so nice to host me over here in Poland, and I get to visit this beautiful facility in Aqua Forest, and it's been an amazing experience. Uh, lots to be uh, talked about, lots to see, uh, but right now we're talking about clams, so let's talk about clams. Um, so Severin, let me know what uh, questions you might have about clams, and I'll be glad to answer any questions, and let's uh, give you guys some good knowledge. There's been a lot of emails that I get on a daily basis, a lot of people asking about clam care, clam health, how to acclimate clams. So we're here to give all that information for you, the aqua uh, forest viewers and the big audience for the reef industry, and also for the newbies that's coming into the industry, we want you to learn all the information, the ins and outs, why it's important to take care of the clams, because invertebrates are very sensitive sensitive compared to most of the other reef inhabitants. So if you can take care of your clam, trust me, you can take care of the rest. And clams are not that hard, but there's little things we need to work out. So here we go. Yes, and, and I just forget to say, which is also very important, uh, John is the owner of Clam Mania, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, beautiful uh, company that they, they, they uh, breed, import, uh, take care of clams. So you can, uh, you can, uh, you can show her his clams on Instagram, uh, Clammania. Uh, .ig? Yes. yes. So, so uh, just watch their video. They are so amazing uh, <laughs> pieces of, of, of uh, corals. I was shocked when I saw them. But anyway, it's very important as well. Uh, so, John, tell us, what are clams? Okay. Well, I specialize in, there's clams in general, but I specialize in giant clams. Now, giant clams are the only clams in the whole world that are photosynthetic. Now, why do I say that? Because photosynthetic clams are large clams. They grow to big size, uh, half a ton size. The gigas gets four feet and it's, it looks like a Volkswagen, a mini Volkswagen in the, in the water. Uh, because they're photosynthetic, they're the only clams in the world that are uh, can use the natural sunlight, the light itself, so they get to be very big. Uh, compared to other filtered clams that just filter only, and the ones you eat uh, uh, um, at your table sometimes. So this one, it's a lot more spectacular, spectacular in color. Why? Because it's closer to the surface. Most of them are usually found closer to the surface, absorbing the sun. They are using the uh, sunlight, um, uh, uh, their mantle, as a solo panel, so the sunlight is the main source of food. So giant clams have been out for a billion years. 
Yeah, a billion years. And we have uh, done studies to show uh, giant clams uh, throughout the billion years, uh, uh, the pH and all that stuff. So with that, we have uh, great laboratories like um, what they have in Aquaforest, and we can get more information to you about that. And that's what giant clams are, and it's mostly their, uh, for our reef industry. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something we love, it's our passion. Awesome. Yeah. And it, it is possible to keep them in the mixed reef tanks? For example, if you have SPS tank, you have uh, some LPS tank, and the clams together. I know um, the answer, but I'd like to keep from Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's a good question, though. Yeah. That's a very yeah. question, good, good question. And a lot of beginners will, uh, or even intermediate people, will ask if that's possible. And the answer is yes. Um, uh, giant clams are actually, uh, um, tridactinus or giant clams, are um, uh, one of the very important inhabitants in the reef uh, uh, ecosystem. In the wild, what they do is they uh, produce a lot of zoanthelia. Mm -hmm. So the zoanthelia, as you know, are in almost every coral. So because of that, they produce so much that uh, if there's any bleaching in the, that particular area in that coral reef, they produce zoanthelia, it releases it into the water, and it goes into different corals, things like that. So in our systems, that are in our runway for corals, we love to mix our clams with all our LPS, SPS systems, because if anything goes wrong, we can always add more zoanthelia naturally. The natural way. It's being produced in abundance in the, uh, in the clam. For example, if I ship out clams, or if I get shipments in, as in the bag, you see these blow black things, that's, and you put it, we always put it under a microscope, zoanthelia. Really? So much zoanthelia. If I uh, ship a, clam, a shipment of lots of clams, I always get bags full of zoanthelia. So you should sell it. Well, we can. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. give it to you. You can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> so what we do is we're so happy to get that water. That water is pristine, and we just we take that water as we're acclimating the clams, and the remaining water we always dump back in our system because right. we're just adding more uh, biology into the system, more yes. zoanthelia, mm -hmm. more bacteria, more of this. So it's actually a wealth of like a, um, developing a big bank of good stuff for your system. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a good good idea, yeah. and and um, clams have uh, probably specific demands, so specific uh, like um, uh, requirement that they need, like uh, alkalinity, like salinity, like probably all the parameters that you know, like yeah. uh, calcium, magnesium, and potassium, and and, all, and strontium probably because yes. strontium is a very important factor uh, for for grow the the skeleton. It's a it's a hard coral, not not the hard coral, but the the shell. It's it's a, it's a big part of their life as well. So what are the requirement to to keep them alive or thrive and uh, for, from, uh, well, that's a good question too. And, and our studies, and then a lot of it goes to I go to the actual islands where these uh, these clams are breeding, and there are uh, an abundance, right? You're always trying to go to the source where uh, they've been living for billions of years. Some of the clams I can see they're big, big clams of maximas of this big, and certain islands are just really big. And you can try to you can age the clam from 20 years on plus. Uh, giant clams live up to 100 years, uh, so they live up a very long period of time. So we go to these areas, we do the chemistry and figure out, okay, what is the consistent chemistry of this water? Why are these clams grown so well? And uh, the question, uh, their answer to this question would be, yes, of course, alkalinity stability is very important. Is uh, if you, you, it can range from alkalinity from in, in the sevens to the eights. Now you can go even a little higher in the nines without a problem, just because sometimes um, if your system is uh, so big in uh, abundance of corals, abundance of, uh, abundance of clams, then you need to have a little more alkalinity because uh, in a single day you can uh, take um, two DKH out. So uh, we keep the parameters sim similar to what you keep your salt, mm -hmm. uh, the natural seawater. So, so we try to keep everything as close as we can to natural seawater. Uh, as long as we do that, we're, we're fine. Uh, we find out giant clams are very similar to any coral as far as that mm -hmm. uh, for all the elements. And, and, it's, and if in, in uh, besides- any, any hard corals? Uh, any hard corals, yes. I, I apologize. Any yeah. hard coral, any hard coral. We keep it to natural seawater for hard corals. Um, but what we do notice, uh, which is very interesting, like any of the trace elements are a little low, we'll see the retraction of the clam. Uh, for example, iron is a very important uh, element for us that we always keep track of. When the iron hits zero, uh, in our system, certain systems, we, we're always dosing iron because it's being absorbed so much in the, the clams. Uh, in some systems where we have macroalgae, it competes for the, the iron. So when it competes for, and I have zero, and I, and, and I see the, uh, the clams retract, even though we test the water once a week, we uh, sometimes we miss it, and then I see the clams kind of closing up. We get the test back, and always the same result: zero iron. We boost iron up. All of a sudden, the clam opens up. Yes, yeah. the iron it's a, it's a it's a it's a part of the discussion that we have everybody because iron it's a 
so much fast absorbed element yeah. and, and, and eventually we should add it to the reef all time. Yeah. And that's why Aquaforest have some certain products like Component 1 to 3, Component Pro that they have already iron in it. Our salt also have, a, have an iron on it. Mm. And, and just uh, it's very important about this. And I, I was quite surprised that, uh, that, uh, that clams react this way. Oh, you yes. see it. Yes. I, was, I, was, uh, I was just, uh, uh, I would like to have this, ask this question, what, what elements it's kind of important here yeah. to, to monitor? Yeah. And of course, iron, it's not easy. You, you don't have, let's say, good tests, uh, like test kits. You, you need to do ICP tests to, yes. to, to be really sure yeah. what is the level. Uh, so yeah, so so that's that's uh, good uh, good to know. Yes, um, and and a little more about, about that. So people always ask about salinity and things like that. Uh, we have some system runs uh, at uh, 35, uh, 30, 33.5 parts per thousand. Sometimes even at 33, and up to 36 parts per thousand. But the main thing we really uh, worry about is the the trace elements. Uh, calc, alkalini, uh, the main major players for that. As long as those numbers are fine, the, uh, the salinity to me is not like the biggest factor. So if your salinity is a little off, do not worry. It's the other things you have to keep track of. Mm -hmm. ICP tests will help you with that, and that's one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Send your ICP test to uh, a great place like uh, Aquaforest. They do a really good job. They go three-step process. They have so many different processes that nobody else has. So for me, it's um, uh, I want accuracy. To me, you know, I, I really I need accuracy to make sure my clams are growing. So that that for me, those trace elements are very important. Not so much the salinity sometimes. Yeah, we. It's generally it's not to you. You have a lot of clams which is, which are valued thousands of yeah. probably dozen thousands of dollars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we all everybody as a reefer have yeah. uh, our pressure precious yeah. Uh, yeah. precious uh, corals in our tank. So yeah. so so it's good to have this habit to just send it time to time yes. just to, to just to match your result that you think uh, that you have in your tank. Because sometimes we as a reefer, we make mistakes also yeah. when we test the water. And, and it's good to give to the professional just to match you. Yeah. you know? And yeah. then if it's fine, if, if you have a good guess about your, your parameter, that's fine. But it's better worry than sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. But tell me, uh, did, did the, the clamps have a gender? Ah. We, can, we can just see if there it's a it's a female or male. How, how it is? Well, some some of them wear lipstick and some don't wear lipstick. That's how you tell the difference. <laughs> oh, and, and, okay. Jokingly, um, no. Yes, you can. Uh, you can. I, I can estimate is what I can say at best. The estimation is based on the um, uh, size of the clam. I would think the clam would be at that size of their age. Uh, for example, uh, Crocea will grow at a different rate. Uh, that's a giant clam, a tridacna, that is usually on the upper levels of the, the coral reef, and it's very brilliant colors. And you have Dorasas will grow up to about uh, two, two feet, a little more, really big, girthy clams. Uh, of course, that clam will grow at a different speed, meaning that um, at three years old to five years old, most clams will hit maturity, sexual maturity. So I know based on the maturity age that this clam will hit, what size it will be versus the Crocea. Crocea could be three years at this, at this size, which is about, let's say, three and a half inch or, or so. Give or take, because some clams will grow at different rates. Uh, and I can estimate that that will be sexual maturity, meaning that um, when they're juvenile or anything below that maturity stage, they are males, right? Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, I've had an uh, incident in the past in Reefapalooza, California, about, um, let's say, eight years back, where um, uh, we, uh, we made a mistake. Someone made a mistake. I'm not going to name names, but they added <laughs> a very uh, cold water to uh, our nice, you know, 78 uh, temperature at Fahrenheit. And it uh, triggered spawning because it was such a big shock. They're scared. They think, hey, we're going to pass away, so we need to make sure we have uh, to breed to our offspring. But uh, anyways, there was a lot of sperm in the water. It was very cloudy. But it was I knew it was all sperm, no eggs, because they didn't hit uh, sexual matur maturity for the crocea, which is uh, five years plus usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's based on size, on the species. I can tell based on that, or I can guess but once it's past that age then you know it's a hermaphrodite it, it it has sperm and egg so interesting fact yes yeah. Yeah. so they one one clam can can breed themselves alone it has been known to happen but yeah. what they do is that one will trigger and um, the way the clams are very they're very um, they, they learn to spawn yeah. and then uh, and then the, hopefully the all those eggs will land in one area or the the spawning will land in one area and they always go for small crevices and things like that. Mm -hmm. And when they spawn, they're all close together. So they have a better chance of, of actually breeding. Uh, 
but they're really good at, okay, you do the sperm and the other one triggers and they'll do, they'll do the eggs. So it's not a lot of inbreeding. They, uh, it's uh, mixed breeding for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that we will end this episode. Okay. And, and I hope to see you again in one moment. But for you, it will be probably a few days. <laughs> uh, so see you in the next episode. And we have more exciting information about clams to share with you. Thank you. Take care.